Yes, after a little Twitter poll this morning, we are going to go on a journey of discovery. Looking at mine and Roman Reigns' love is not going to be lovely. I am Ross Twiddell from Cultaholic.com. You are my sexual wank pheasants, and welcome to all of the WTF moments from Fastlane 2018. And I'm kicking things off by calling WWE out on their own bollocks. What do you mean this is the last? This is the only opportunity to get on the WrestleMania card. I am sure that with a month's worth of story talent to go, and with 38 matches on the card itself to fill, two of which are presumably going to be battle royals, every single superstar with two working legs will be on WrestleMania. The only thing that would keep you off the show is if you quite literally Adam Pachitied, which means crap just like he is at the predictions team we do here at Cultaholic.com. In Vince McMahon's mouth when he wasn't looking, WWE I'm not having it anymore, don't give me that bollocks of all, oh, there's no road to WrestleMania for him, of course there is as long as his legs are working. What does everybody hate? Overt references to oral sex that deluded all men claim actually aren't there. Isn't that right, Al Snow? They also hate a multi-million dollar company using phone videos for promos with words appearing on screen, so why on earth was there a mountain of those videos at the start of Fastlane 2018? WWE shoving something down the throat to their fans that the fans don't want in their throats? I've never seen that before! The Big oh, Dog! Oh, oh, oh. Silas Young, I mean Randy Orton, claims that the United States Championship is the only championship to elude him during his time in WWE, even though we all know that is complete bollocks because there's a couple of champions chips, the hardcore and the European spring to mind immediately, that he could have won that have eluded him since he has been an active superstar. There's no doubt about it after hearing this promo, if he walked up to Silas Young, I mean Randy Orton, and asked him how his life is going, he would have replied, completed it mate, that's right, he is Jay off the in us. Who knew my Bane spirit animal Rusev was so big in Canada? Rusev, eh? What's our lot about? Now if you were to tell me that in 2018 we would see a sign dedicated to Lilani Kai, I would spit in your face like Jamie Carragher does with 14 year old girls. Again, again, again they have Aiden English sing a half baby face, half heel song and then have my Bane spirit animal Rusev work in heel and I don't know why. I don't know how many times I've got to say this but WWE for Christ's sake just let the eagle that is Rusev as a baby face five with the eagle's nest that is the baby face ranks in WWE why are you trying to stop this happening stop with this silliness man you're only robbing yourself of a few pennies stopping a couple of numpties from buying Rusev Day shirts because they've been insulted by Aiden English but most importantly of all WWE you're robbing me of my life being complete do you not like us man at least he had the Rusev Day flag for the flag on his microphone at least WWE got one bit right ah ah as my pal Stone Cold Steve Austin used to say back in the attitude Era. Every day is Rusev Day, and you can shove those signs up your Cadbury Alley. So Tom Phillips brings up the duly noted quote made by Shane McMahon quite clearly in a flippant manner towards my Bane spirit animal Rusev, and Byron Saxton completely misses his point. Byron Saxon always does that, my bad. The bloke who had a million signs on the highway is a living, breathing, walking WTF mum and some of them were hits, like comparing Jinder Mahal to Superman 64, and some of them, like that one there, are complete misses. One of the worst signs in the history of wrestling, I think so. Now it's not quite at the top because we've seen rape allegations and swastikas on signs at WWE events in the past, but it's not too far below. And how you mark? You need a question mark. Corey Graves claims that if there's one thing Randy Orton excels at, it's staying cool and it's staying calm. And do you even watch the wrestling, pal? Where have you been looking for the past 16 years? It's well documented that Randy Orton has one of the shortest fuses in WWE. And he literally walks down to the ring with a song saying he's got voices inside of his head. He is completely cracked. Corey, do you need those lyrics in that song changed to I'm a schizophrenic with deep lying mental issues because you're not getting it, are you? I can't believe you haven't got there already. The man is not cool. He is not calm. He is not calculated. He is not cold-blooded. He is not quite literally a snake. He's just a very troubled, Silas Young-looking man. And the commentary team making a big old hoo-ha about Randy Orton being a 16-year veteran inside the squared circle when he's inside the squared circle with a 20-year veteran in Bobby Roode is all kinds of Adam Pacitti, which of course means wrong, like he is in the predictions competitions we have here at Goldholic.com. Jinder Mahal, as we all know, the old adage says that if you are a wrestler, you always bring a gear with you because you never know when you might need it. The old adage most certainly is not, you must wear your gear at all times and watch television like you've slept funny while your little brother admires your spotty back. Jinder Mahal didn't have a match so why on earth was he in his gear? Why on earth did WWE take him out of his suit? The only part of his makeup? That is undeniable. The man rocks a suit like no other superstar does. If there are Byron Saxton chants during any match on a WWE card, you take the wrestlers that are involved in that match 
pluck them out of the ring and fire them. Bobby Roode and Randy Orton, we all wish you well in your future endeavours, which of course you have none because there is no coming back from this. Rest in peace your careers respectively. How on earth can you try and sell this match as one of the greatest United States Championship matches in history mere minutes after the entire world heard chants of Byron Saxton over the top of it, Corey Graves? Now I doubt Piper versus Valentine, Malenko versus Guerrero, even Zack Ryder versus Dolph Ziggler befell this fate, Corey. And if they did, well, we need to get the hell out of here because Byron Saxton wasn't even a thing when those matches took place. Byron, show you that again, show you that again, show you that again, Kevin. At least say, please, you rude waste of bloody oxygen. Now as much as we pray Donald Trump does not hit that button, we do indeed pray from now on that Byron Saxton does hit his button, which mutes him when he's giving directions to Kevin Dunn. But after hearing this backstage bollocks from Byron Saxton, there's no wonder that Kevin Dunn is such a buck tooth bastard dick when you're not getting please or thank yous from Byron bloody Saxton. Who on earth does Byron Saxton think he is? Now that sign there says tea time with something which is good enough for me to bring back. T -t 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 tea time. Ah, the memories leave them the piss alone. Cheers for the other sign as well, tweeted to me by Carter Cook, although I'm not quite sure why that sign there was tweeted to me at all. Byron Saxton battered again with a pointlessness when he asked how many near falls you can have in one match. What do you mean, pal? This is WWE. You can have as many near falls as I have nervous breakdowns by not sleeping at night. So we're in the midst of a SmackDown Live match at WrestleMania, yet we have to sit through a feature-length film of a promo previewing a Raw match at WrestleMania. And I know that Survivor Series is marketed these days as the one night of the year where SmackDown and Raw go head-to-head, -head, so things like this should be expected, but not things that long. It's like turning up to watch Baby Metal rip your throat out, then all of a sudden Westlife appear without warning. They're both things we love, but they don't belong in the same setting. Tom Phillips speaking the truth is a WTF moment, I swear. He claimed his 266 days since the first ever women's Money in the Bank ladder match and that is absolutely spot on. This of course is a WTF moment because if you cast your mind back to the first ever women's Money in the Bank ladder match, a man with three testicles won it, the third testicle being his face. Then WWE realised their mistake, redid the match three days later the way they should have done it the first time round. And there I was thinking they pretend that woeful misjudgement just didn't exist anymore after redoing it, it's a fair play to them I guess. But then he had to put his bloody foot in it while asking what Carmella is waiting for when it comes to cashing in her contract. Tom Phillips, if you do not understand the concept of cashing in the Money in the Bank contract by now, we're mere 12 years after it debuted, you're beyond help, pal. Maybe if you took the blood out of your cock and put it back in the brain, it would start working again. Now, if you were to tell me there would be references to Teddy Hart, to Harry Smith and to Lance Archer on a WWE pay-per-view in 2018, I would have spat in your face like Jamie Carragher does to 14-year-old girls. Isn't that a great missile drop kick from Becky Lynch, I'll wait there, get your eyes out of your arsehole, cameraman, you dirty bastard. Be sour, catch AIDS and die, especially you emoji, cos nobody likes you. Made a grave mistake, Corey. Corey Graves, what's he calling Big E a derelict again for? Big E's not in very poor condition after disuse and neglect. He isn't shamefully negligent of his duties or obligations. He sells them pancakes like Rusev Day shirts. And finally, Corey Graves, he is not a person without a home, job or property. What on earth are you talking about, pal? Hey now, Tom Phillips, don't talk about the use of stealing things like movesets because the criminal records are full enough as it is. Corey Graves this time claims the New Day never bring the same look twice. I've seen them in that gear before many times. <laughs> since when was I in polystyrene? Since when did iron bounce like that? Since when did iron, when it comes in contact with steel, make a dull thud sound? Now if those mallets were iron, then every single build that is constructed what iron will be just like Hulk Hogan. It'll come crashing down and hurt inside and be racist. You won't do it. You won't do it. You guys did it. They did it. Who the hell is Grogan and why on earth does he have his own day and why on earth am I at Fastlane 2018 supporting it? So you've watched Ric Flair do the grabs for a lifetime using an iconic catchphrase all the way through. You've watched his daughter Charlotte Flair make a debut in the business taking that iconic catchphrase and making it her own. So here we are after a lifetime and a bit of that catchphrase and still what do we get? Who? Byron Saxton claims there are parallels between Ruby Riot and Charlotte and then goes on to explain how two months into Charlotte's debut, two months into her debut, Jesus Christ Byron, I thought that two hour match on Raw was long enough. 
Now, Corey Graves is taking the Twitter down, playing this moment, saying these internet people couldn't do his job better than him. But since I won a commentator of the air poll that involved Jim Ross, I reckon I could, Corey, you prick. How on earth can you say that it was the Joker that claimed that some people just want to watch the world burn when it was Alfred, you bloody plonker? That's what Michael Caine would say. It's one of the most iconic lines in cinema from the past 10 years. And you fluffed it, you nabty. And Oscar can't point at a sign without looking like an absolute numpty Ronda Rousey. You could learn a thing or two from her. Isn't WrestleMania going to be lovely with Oscar challenging Charlotte in a match we've all wanted to see for bad time? You've got a million reasons to choose from for Daniel Bryan not being a fast lane 2018. Maybe he's taking Birdie to a party. Maybe he's planting some carrots. Maybe he's in Bloomberg with his wife. But for Christ's sake, WWE don't say he's at a family function when one of his extended family is in the upcoming match. What does it achieve WWE either Peyton John Cena to be a prick who doesn't care about his family as much as he should get Peyton Daniel Bryan to be an unprofessional bastard, which of course he is. Uh, uh, I've broke my neck. You big baldy bush camping bitch. Now it's clear that he does know the difference between his arse and his elbow because Byron Saxton reckons that there is a pinfall that AJ Styles is about to break up. It's not pal, it's a submission. Which ironically is something anybody listening to your commentary will think you're in with your brain being starved of oxygen, your mouth blurting verbal diarrhea. Big baldy barren butt brash body body bare breath. Impressive, bro, 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 but don't bet. Now I guess if the pitch invaders at the London Stadium over the weekend have taught us anything, it's that SmackDown Live should be played behind closed doors on Tuesday, and that WWE should be finding SmackDown Live for failing to control their supporters. Why does it always have to be about Shane, for Christ's sake? I feel like I say the same thing every bloody week, yet nothing changes. I want plenty of those nuns. And finally, we end with the fact that there was no Undertaker challenging John Cena for what seems to be an inevitable match at WrestleMania 34. WTF, I don't know what to say. He must have got lost. He is really old. And that's it for your WTF moments from Fastlane 2018. I've been Ross Twiddell from Cultaholic.com. Thank you for being a sexual wank pheasant. Although there was no wankity wank this week, so pick up your game before Raw tomorrow. Follow me on the Twitter machine at Ross on Rasslin. If you like what we do here at Cultaholic.com, please head over to our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. Anything you can afford to spare us will be greatly appreciated, but most importantly of all, do not forget to join us on all forms of social media apart from the ones that don't drink whiskey at night. Uh -huh.